Good morning. Uh, Rosie the Riveter here from the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. You're right, you might recognize me as a feminist icon of the 1940s. And I'm here to read you a very special story today. And we're going to have an appearance from a special guest. So, do any of you know what this is? This is a caboose. This is the car that rides at the end of a train. And we're gonna be reading a story about a caboose today. But first, we have a special broadcast from Sir Topham Hatt. That's right, Sir Topham Hatt from the famous Thomas the Tank Engine book and TV series. Now he couldn't be here today because he's busy out on the rail yard, but on his day off, he recorded a little something for you all called Thomas and Friends Search and Rescue. Take it away, Sir Topham. Hi, today we're going to be reading Thomas and Friends Search and Rescue. It is early in the morning on the island of Sodor. There was a big storm last night. Thomas is very busy clearing tracks and delivering supplies. Thomas will be busy the whole day and he needs his friends to help. Can you find Percy? There he is. The big storm damaged the sign on the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Sir Topham Hat needs Thomas to go to the docks to pick up a new sign for the center. Where is Sir Topham Hat? Will you help Thomas find him? There he is behind the door. Thomas hurries to the docks. They are bustling with activity. I have a special job to do, he peeps to Spencer. If it were truly special, I would be doing it, Spencer Steams. Now out of my way, please. I have a job to do for Duke and Duchess of Boxford. Will you help Cranky f find the crate for Thomas to deliver? It's right there behind that cloud. Spencer speeds away from the docks. He races around a sharp turn, too late to see the messy tracks filled with garbage on the track ahead. Spencer tries to stop, but the tracks are slippery. Crash! News of Spencer's accident spreads quickly. Who tells Thomas? He tells Thomas. Thomas knows he has a special job to do, but he thinks he should try to help Spencer. He quickly collects some workers and goes to the site of the accident. Will you help the workers get ready to clear the tracks? I knew you would. Rocky is ready to help Spencer get to the steamworks. Oh no, one of the workers is hurt. Can you help Harold rescue him? Here we go. Sir Topham Hat is waiting for Thomas at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. It is important to do our job, says Sir Topham Hat, but it's also important to help our friends when they're in trouble. Thomas, you are a really useful engine and a very good friend. Thomas puffs with pride. Can you put the new sign on the Sodor Search and Rescue Center? There's the new sign. Nice. Well, the busy day is over and Thomas rolls back to Tidmouth Sheds for a very well-deserved rest. He is happy that he has been really useful and he is happy to have so many friends. That concludes our story of Thomas and Friends Search and Rescue. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much to Sir Topham Hat for reading Thomas and Friends Search and Rescue. And if you want a copy of Thomas and Friends Search and Rescue to read at home with your family and friends, 
we have one available in the museum gift shop, both in person and online. So, here's the story I'm going to be reading to you today. It's called The Caboose Who Got Loose, about an adventurous train car who wants a little bit more for her life. This is my own personal copy, and it's been in my family for almost two decades. And this is another book that we sell online and in person at our museum gift shop. So, get ready to hear about the adventures of Katie Caboose. The Caboose Who Got Loose, written and illustrated by Bill Peet. When Katie Caboose rambled down the train tracks, the engines were steamers with puffing smokestacks. She was a caboose who disliked being last, with an endless black cloud of smoke rolling past. It's not only too smoky, the caboose would complain, there's the jerks and the jolts of this noisy freight train. The engine up front always wore a big smile, as he lumbered along for mile after mile, he was proud of his being so powerful and strong that he could haul a freight train a hundred cars long. So on he went, chugging with no worry or care, leaving Katie Caboose in dark clouds of despair. Katie had little hope she would ever get loose or ever be anything but a caboose. I can wish, sighed poor Katie, what else can I do? If you wish hard enough, then your wish might come true. Often Katie would wish that she someday could be something quiet and simple, like a lovely elm tree. Or, or a ramshackle barn all alone on a hill where the noisiest thing was a squeaky windmill. It might become lonely, she thought way out there, but at least there's a view with a lot of fresh air. Whenever she passed through a small country town, Katie wished she could stop and just settle down and be one of the houses who sat in a row on a tree-shaded street with no place to go. It's so restful, thought Katie, where one can relax as she hurried and scurried on down the train tracks. What she wished most to be, much more than the rest, was a cabin she'd seen on her trips through the west. A little log shack half covered with vines, perched on a slope in a forest of pines. How perfect, thought Katie, as she hurried on by it, to live there in the trees where it's peaceful and quiet. But all the caboose could look forward to was the deep rocky canyon the train traveled through. where huge boulders lean way over the tracks in towering, top-heavy, gigantic stacks. What is holding them up? Frightened Katie could wonder as the earth-shaking train went rumbling right under. If one should come loose and fall down upon her, it would squash Katie flat and she'd be a goner. If she didn't get squashed, there was more to be dreaded up the winding steep grades where the engine was headed. High up in the mountains were terrible ledges where the track ran along only feet from the edges. The view was breathtaking, but after one look, it was so upsetting, she shivered and shook. If she slipped off the track, then down she would go to be smashed into bits on the rocks far below. Then poor Katie received even more of a fright from a smoke-blackened tunnel as dark as the night, and she crept through the tunnel with a horrible thought that far back in the darkness she'd suddenly be caught by caboose-eating monsters who lurked all about. They would gobble her up before she got out. Her trips always ended near a city somewhere, way out in the freight yard with smoke clouding the air where turmoil of trains made a great noisy rumble on crisscrossing tracks, an impossible jumble. The train came to a stop and the cars were unhitched 
Then off to a side track, the caboose was soon switched, where Katie could sit and take in the fine scenery with such lovely sights as a load of machinery. Coal cars and flat cars, lumber stacked on their backs, wheeling carloads of pigs with snouts poking through the grass. They always left Katie in the midst of it all, while the engine received a complete overhaul. The huge engine at last had run down from the strain from the 10,000 miles he had hauled the long train. Back in the roundhouse, men swarmed all about to check over and under him, inside and out replacing old pistons and bolts that were missing, catching leaks in the boiler that made a loud hissing, cleaning rust from his piping that ran everywhere, checking steam valves and pumps in great need of repair. As Katie sat there through one long dreary night, staring up through the smoke at a red signal light, a small house appeared in the sky like a ghost, a shack of the switchman, perched high on the post. I'd like to be you, said the shack very sadly. If I could trade places, I would very gladly. A caboose is what I've always wanted to be, for you have the best life from what I can see. Before Katie could think of some way to reply, all at once a long freight train came thundering by. The next thing she knew, she was jerked and then jolted, and then hitched to the train with her coupler bolted. As the train left the freight yard, poor Katie looked back to catch a last glimpse of that sad little shack. From now on, Katie promised, I shall never complain. I'll be a happy caboose at the end of the train, and I'll put up with the jolts, train noise, and the rest, all the smoke that rolls by, or at least try my best. With her new point of view, she enjoyed the long ride. It was fun on a trip through the broad countryside. But when the train crept up a steep mountain grade, then poor Katie found she was still as afraid. And once more, she began to shiver and shake and thought of the frightening curves she must take. Her unsteady wheels could cause her to slip, which would quickly put a quick end to the trip. It was a hot afternoon, so the going was rough, and the engine up front was in a puffing big huff. He groaned, what a day to chug up such a grade on a bare mountainside with not a hint of shade. Then he came steaming over the very last hump and he lunged with a fury that made the cars jump all the way back to Katie, who got such a jolt that it snapped off a rusty old coupling bolt. She was free of the train! At last she was loose! And away down the track went Katie Caboose. On down the grade she flew faster and faster, straight for a curve and certain disaster. When Katie hit the curve, she took off like a kite, high over the treetops on her first and last flight. That would quickly have ended poor Katie Caboose if it hadn't have been for two towering spruce. The, the Caboose became caught in a very tight squeeze between the tall trunks of two evergreen trees. At first, she could hardly believe her good luck. What a wonderful place it was to be stuck. She thought she sure was dreaming. It couldn't be true. Here she was in the trees with a beautiful view. It's so perfect, sighed Katie. Yet I'm really not free. I know sooner or later, they'll come after me. And then, sure enough, up the mountains that night, came a train with a crane and a powerful light. She could have gone a leaping off here, came a shout, like a great glaring eye. The light searched about. It flashed past the trees down the steep rocky bluff. It searched high and low, but not quite high enough. Or it would have soon spotted the missing caboose, but all they could find was a startled bull moose. 
Let's all call it quits, growled the boss of the crew. For all that I care, she's in Kalamazoo. Katie stayed in the treetops. No one ever found her, except for the squirrels and the birds all around her. At last she was free, just as free as the breeze, and how Katie did love it up there in the trees. And indeed, oh indeed, oh indeed, Katie did. That's the caboose who got loose. So if you didn't know, this is just one piece of our week-long Halloween celebration, which is called Click or Treat. Here in the museum, which is open today from 11 to 4, and the weekend of Halloween, again from 11 to 4, we have decorations, our friendly phantom, an undead butler named Lurch, and lots of interesting little things to look at in each of our layouts, which you can find using a scavenger hunt. You can find the scavenger hunt online or ask at the ticket window when you pick up your ticket. And we have lots of online activities available for Click or Treat as well, including coloring pages and crafts. And throughout the week, we'll be uploading interesting and the kind of spooky videos about paranormal happenings that have happened on the railroad. So we do hope you join us to celebrate Halloween. And thank you so much for listening to Thomas the Friends Search and Rescue and the Caboose Who Got Loose. And if you're interested in further supporting your, the museum, we are offering special treats, no tricks, through donations to our GoFundMe. Thank you so much and have a good day.